Who do you think we see on third and long, third and fourth and short on the defensive line? And he writes so many options. Well, that is the key to this whole thing as we solve for the future. And we're doing so with Florida State's defensive line. And I think you nailed it. We can go a lot of different directions here. But the fact that you have options, and I would just look at them as speed and beef. So beef for short yardage, options, several. Speed for, you know, obvious passing downs, you've got some. You know, you don't have enough. That's where we see a shortage uh, off the edge, rushing the passer. Not enough options there. I mean, we all know verse is going to be on the field. And, I mean, I, I, I think it's you, you pretty much your standard of what we saw last year. But on the inside, man, the ability, I mean, I would slide Briggs inside. I would mm-hmm. obviously have Fabo out there and Fisk. I mean, these are huge dudes. Yeah, I so I would say on passing downs, if it's pass obvious third down, I want Briggs in the interior. I want yeah. his I want his yeah. ability to be quick to to be uh to our benefit. But I don't know who the next guy would be. And that's interesting because we have a holdover in Fabian Lovett. But I don't know that he's necessarily the guy that you want out there on third and ten because maybe it is Fisk. Like that's the thing here. You've well, got another piece yeah. to the puzzle that you don't know a whole ton about and how he's going to play, not at Western Michigan, but against Power 5 offensive linemen. And the great thing about where we are as a program right now is when he goes into this camp, this spring camp and fall camp, you're going to see, reliably speaking, what he will look like against a Power 5 offensive lineman because we finally have them. And it's been forever since we've had them. And you never knew what the hell a defensive lineman was actually capable of against an offensive line because we never had a good one of them. So I look forward to figuring out where he fits. But I think Fisk is the big question mark here about is he a specialist? Is he a three-down type player? Well, the beauty also to add to your uh, enthusiasm and excitement based around both quality of talent up front and also depth is the competitive reps they're going to get in practice coupled with the rest they're going to get in the games. Yeah. You will now see a much more explosive version of all of our defensive linemen, the interior big guys, especially if they've got it to collapse the pocket, they can, because they're not going to be exhausted for having to play too many reps. You can come out and we can replace you with a quality defensive lineman. The best teams do exactly that. Guys always look like they're going hundred miles per hour and they jump off the TV. If you're watching a game, at home, and you're like, why is it their defensive lineman? Well, because that dude's not having to play 65 snaps. He's not. He's in there because he's being asked to play 35 snaps at 100 miles per hour because the next guy's going to do the same and the next guy's going to do the same. So if we have an 85-snap game, a 90-snap game, three guys can rotate and they can go balls to the wall because they're going to get taken out for the next series. They don't have to be back out there. And so... I just think you're going to see a much better version of Fabian Lovett who gets hurt in the first freaking game and then has to worry about that injury all year long. He misses a ton of games, but he also wasn't a guy that when he came back, A, could really, we could afford to have off the field all that much. You know, he had to be out there and he wasn't, I don't think, any longer in the kind of shape he was coming out of camp because he missed all that time with the injury. I just think you're going to see a much better version. It's a payday version of Fabian Lovett that you got to see. He'll be made better by the fact that he won't have to play so many reps. I would argue that some of the veteran players that you already know what you have in, you know, some of these games that you're playing against the North Alabamas of the world, I mean, how much Fabian Lovett do you need to see? How much, uh, you know, how much of these, any of the, the veteran big guys do you need to see against Southern Miss? Uh, uh, you, you know what I mean? You've already burned the shirt for three really good interior defensive linemen. And, you know, one was an academic red shirt for Tafasi, but you get those guys in there and get them the experience. You don't have to worry about counting against the four anymore. And there is so much to parse through. I, I want to be clear real quick on Fabian. If it's third and medium, I want him out there. But if it's third and 12, I don't know if he's the best option. He might be if he could play at 100 miles an hour. The other thing I'd say about the relationship of defensive interior when you've got multiple guys there is if Robert Cooper was at 100%, then Fabian Lovett would look better for it. Because yeah, it, it, yeah, these, yeah. these things all work in tandem. They all work in tandem. And the fun part is, I think when we get to a third and long situation, you're going to have to pick your poison. Because a healthy Jared Verse, a healthy Lovett, Fisk, 
Maybe Daryl Jackson gets involved here. Patrick Payton. I mean, it's just like, which guy do you double? Because you can't leave in more than maybe one extra player to block in that situation. So somebody's going to come free. But let's say Fisk is 100% healthy for the bulk of the season, and so is Fabian. That, in turn, just makes the other guy better. Because, you know, Robert Cooper, I think, was playing on one busted wing. Which, Clearly. I mean, that, that severely hampers the way that they can scheme up to stop you. Yeah, Big Coop was hurt all year, guys. Uh, we couldn't talk about it as much as we wanted to. He really couldn't either, but he was playing with one wing. It was obvious that he was out there just giving it a go. And he's such a big guy that sometimes you get away with it. But against the better teams and the better offensive lines, he proved to be ineffective because against those offensive lines, he got moved around rather easily because he, he's playing with one arm. I mean, uh, I, I think that was obvious. And so I hope, obviously, we, we, we get a guy in there that's healthy and we don't have to rely on people who aren't. That's the depth thing that we keep going on and on about. By the way, in obvious past situations, as we were going back over this, um, you know, it, it's it's Patrick Payton off the one side versus off the other side. Uh, and then in the interior, you know, you're going to have fun with Levitt in there and, and Fisk in there and probably. But, uh, you know, Briggs could slide inside, like you said, as well. Well, you could even, I mean, verse is large enough to go fight in the inside third and obvious if you wanted to get McClendon out there or you know if you wanted to get just another pass rusher that happened with Demarcus Walker in his career and it proved to be a, a great part of oh, yeah. his yeah. production value I think it increased his draft stock that anytime he went against a guard on third and obvious he made him look foolish so even if it is one of your stud players and in that case Demarcus Walker was by far your best pass rusher in 2016 you can still move that player around, and yeah. Adam Fuller has, has proven to do that a couple of years ago, better examples because they were more productive examples, but he would line up Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas next to each other. So this is a coach who has proven in his scheme that even though guys are considered rush ends and they term it whatever you want, Buck and Fox and all that kind of stuff, he will line them up together to game up some opportunities to free one of those guys up to make a splash play in the backfield. So it gets fun there. The harder part and the tougher an question to answer is, in third and run, what's your four? Because Jared Verse needs to be tough in order to hold up and beat an absolute guy out there on third and one or third and two. You like what you have in the defensive interior, but then is your fourth guy Dennis Briggs on the edge? Is it going to be this Edmund kid? Or does Fisk, can he line up out there and then you bring uh, Jackson out? It, that's going to be a tougher one to solve. I'm going to have an old band moment as we finish up with ISF solving the future segment. And that is that uh, we can do away with all these stupid names for positions. Let's, let's stop the nonsense. You're a linebacker. You're a defensive end. You're a defensive tackle. You're a safety, you're free safety, you're strong safety. If you'd like to want to add that in there, fine. You can do that. We're done here. That's the end of it. Middle linebacker, outside linebacker, defensive end, nose tackle, defensive tackle, safety, cornerback. That's all you are. You can run around, move all around. You can call yourselves. I don't care if you call yourselves freaking lizards. Stop doing it. 